Therefore, in view of God's mercy, this is Romans 12, 1 and 2. In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Listen. Listen to verse 2. Listen to verse 2. Do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. Don't conform that it's, that it's all about you. It's all about, I'm getting mine. It's all about, I'm, I'm doing my thing. You know, I'm getting my money and, and I'm going to marry my wife and all this. Don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's not about me. It's not about me. So we look back in that verse, and where does this start out? How do I get to that place where I realize it's not about me? How do I actually worship God? It says, in view of God's mercy. What is God's mercy? It's the cross. It's the cross of Jesus. It's like this crazy thing where, where you make it all about Him. He makes it all about you, and He focuses in on your life and every part of it and holds it together and takes you to places you can never even imagine. The Bible says that in your life, if you allow Him to do it, He can do immeasurably more than anything you've ever imagined, anything you've ever dreamed of. He can do immeasurably more than that. That's what God offers to every single person, young or old, no matter how young you are. No matter how gone you are, no matter how broken you are, how sinful you are, no matter how many times you screwed up, no matter how many times you cussed your parents out, no matter how many times you had an F's on your report card, in view of the mercy of God, it means it's not deserved. So guys, the, the only way that you can make it not about yourself is to come to, a, to an altar, is to, to leave your past behind. And to come to a place in view, God, of the cross of Jesus that I didn't deserve it. Let me explain to you why you need the cross. Because God is perfect. Listen, listen now. Just, I'm going to be a little bit longer because I feel like that's... God Almighty is sitting on a throne right now. And nonstop, 24-7, Okay, when we go to sleep tonight, 24-7, angels are around the throne. Angels, mighty warriors. Listen, when angels, when people see angels, they're not the little babies in diapers. They are warriors, and people fall down as if they're dead before the angels. They say, I'm dead. I'm, I'm so afraid. And they, every, the first thing they say is, don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. Because they're fierce. Listen to what they're doing. They're bowing down and worshiping and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You know what holy means? Set apart. These mighty warriors, they're saying, he's 24-7, he's seated on the throne and they can't even contain themselves because of the holiness of who our God is. And they, they say there's creatures that are, that are flying beings with with, with eyes all around them and they're covering their eyes and, and doing that non-stop so they cover their eyes they can't even look up because of the perfection of who our God is and he says you have to meet that to be able to see me you have to meet that standard let me ask you have you met, have you met that standard I, I'm the first one to say I will lay face down and say I have not met that standard God not even close. This morning I failed you. Every single day I failed you. The way that I speak, I failed you, God. And he says, while you are imperfect, while you are still sinning, Dustin, I'm going to live. I'm going to leave my throne first of all. Live the life that you couldn't live. I'm going to live the perfect life, and then I'm going to take the cross that you deserve because we deserve punishment because we didn't live up to the standard. He can't accept it. He's just perfection. That's who he is. And he took the wooden torture tool 
with nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And God says, all the sin, all our sin, all our pain, all the shame and the guilt that we deserve was placed on him. And he says, now look, if you receive what he's done for you, if you say that is enough for me, you're perfect. It's scandalous grace. It's craziness from the perspective of the world. But it's not about you. It's about him. In view of the cross of Jesus, in view of that, it makes everything make sense now. And now you can live in freedom because his cross is enough. His grace is enough. His blood is enough for you.